Hello everyone. Okay, so the next part of the course is looking at the effects. Shajan, seriously. <laughs> 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 so you're not gonna manage your distraction? Right, Shajin, I'm actually gonna throw something at you. The film is moving. Right. Um, the next part of the course is about the effects of smoking. Okay. Now, there's three main components of cigarette smoke that you need to know the effects of. First. Carbon monoxide, you are not to use the abbreviation, you're to use the full term, okay? Carbon monoxide, that's one. Another one is tar. And the third one is nicotine. Now, cigarettes contain uh, many chemicals, a, a huge range of them. Some of them are extremely harmful, some of them, you know, they need to be you need to be exposed to on a more consistent basis for, for it to be harmful but these are the three main ones that you need to know about and you need to know in detail their effects on um, the body there's two branches to this part the first is what effect these things have on the lungs and the second part is what effect they have on the cardiovascular system i.e. Um, blood vessels, the heart, uh, and the blood. Okay, so we're going to start first by looking at the effect on lungs, and I'll make it easy for you. You don't have to worry about nicotine and carbon monoxide when it comes to the lungs. The main effects of um, cigarette smoke on the lungs is mainly through tar. So you might have seen the pictures where um, the tar has accumulated in smokers' lungs, turns them black. And we're going to look today at what is the actual effect it's have, having on the gas exchange process that's happening in the lungs. Okay? So, um, a general structure of the lungs, you've got your um, trachea, your windpipe, uh, which branches off into two bronchi. The bronchi main branches then branch off again into further smaller airways called bronchioles and a gross oversimplification ultimately ending in uh, the alveoli okay you do need to be aware of these things so i'll just sort of label that trachea there bronchi there and the smaller one being bronchioles and ultimately after getting smaller and smaller branching up you know continuing branching splitting up into further smaller airways ultimately you end up in the very small air sacs called the alveoli okay alveolus being the singular okay so that's the general structure it's essentially just airways okay that get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to these small sacs called the alveoli. Now what we're going to look at very briefly before we look at the effect of tar is how the normal gas exchange process works. Very briefly, you do need to have a general understanding of this. Um, you should have covered it in GCSE. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in on one of these alveoli. That's the bronchiole right there and the alveolus there. Remember, this is a single layer of cells making a short diffusion pathway for gases. And due to the expansion and contraction of the thorax, you have air going in and out of the alveolus with the aim that um, ref 
re uh, ventilation of the lungs allows air with a high concentration of oxygen in, which then diffuses into a capillary which passes by very close to the alveolus. Okay? So deoxygenated blood coming in this way, and then as it passes the alveolus, it becomes oxygenated because as we have lots of O2 here and very little O2 in the capillary, O2 oxygen will diffuse down the concentration gradient into the capillary. And at the same time, because we've got lots of CO2, all your cells are respiring and um, CO2 is leaving the cells, collecting in the blood, and the blood being delivered to the alveolus here. We've got lots of CO2 here, but very little CO2 in the air. So CO2 goes in the opposite direction into the alveolus, and then when you breathe out, it's gone. Okay? So the effect of the smoking in, um, in, in the main, we're going to look at how it affects this process. Okay? Um, the more clear your airways are, the better your lungs can function, and the more efficient this process of gas exchange is. If there's you know, a good supply of oxygen in the blood, um, your heart will be getting enough oxygen, all your tissues, all your vital organs will be getting enough oxygen to be able to carry out respiration and provide energy for all your um, bodily functions or cellular processes. Okay, and at the same time we need to get rid of carbon dioxide. So the more efficient this process is, the better that is. And because of smoking and the accumulation of tar in the lungs, it makes this process less efficient, and we're going to see how that happens. Okay? Right. Um, in my discussion of um, you know the the function of the the lungs, i.e., to ventilate and then exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide um, with the capillary and the blood, um, forgot to mention one thing, which is what the lungs are doing um, normally to make sure that the airways are clear. Okay. So uh, we've discussed this before, that your lungs um, have goblet cells and they have cilia that are A, um, keeping the uh, pathogens from infecting the lungs. So we discussed that before, I'm just going to go over it again, that lining your um, bronchioles are goblet cells and their function is to secrete mucus all right so you've got a layer of mucus on the inside now that mucus is there to trap any pathogen that might come in via the air okay because you don't want these to be remaining there um, so any pathogen that comes in um, can be trapped in the mucus and you also have cilia, which are hair-like structures that are moving that mucus back up the airway, thereby removing any pathogen trapped in the mucus. And that mucus might be coughed out, sneezed out, or um, swallowed down into the gut where the low pH will um, deal with the microorganism, okay, or pathogen. Right, so let's now look at what effect smoking has on this system, okay? Looking at all the components, i.e. what effect um, tar has on goblet cells in the cilia and the mucus, as well as how it's affecting the alveoli. Okay, so I've just zoomed in here on 
um, a bronchiole and some alveoli right here. And we're going to look at now um, what's the sequence of events um, that occurs when someone is smoking. And then as we go along the sequence, we're, we're going to assume that we're going from short-term effects to long-term effects. So, as I said, for the lungs, for the effect on lungs, we only have to worry about tar. Carbon monoxide and nicotine um, have their effects more on the cardiovascular system, the blood and blood vessels, so we're not going to look at that right now. Um, so tar comes in, and the first effect that it has is that it starts to accumulate um, in the bronchioles. Okay, in the airways. Now what that does is A, it um, obstructs it obstructs the cilia. Okay, so the cilia now can't really move to remove the mucus. And B, it has a kind of additive effect that it activates the goblet cells. Now, if you remember what goblet cells do, they're the cells that are producing the mucus. So you've got this double effect. Um, first, you're activating the goblet cells, making them produce more mucus, but at the same time, you're obstructing and inactivating the cilia that are trying to remove the mucus uh, from the airways. So, the net effect of both of those is going to be a build-up, actually I'm not going to say a build-up, I'm going to be fancy and say it leads to an accumulation of mucus. Now on its own, that's already causing problems because the person that's got an accumulation of mucus in their lungs is now coughing, so otherwise known as um, smoker's cough, but this is the first effects. So um, the accumulation of mucus, you know, the coughing is a natural bodily response to the mucus in the lungs. Now in this case, the, the mucus is building up because of the tar itself, okay? So we've got an accumulation of mucus right there. And the, you know, the, the next step in this is if you're not removing mucus, just remember what's in that mucus. What we've got in that mucus is pathogens that are normally trapped and the mucus is doing its job. Uh, that mucus would normally be removed, but we're not removing that mucus anymore. The pathogens are still in there. So now we've got increased chance of um, infection by pathogens because the mucus that contains those pathogens is not being removed. They're just building up. Okay, so these are um, the main short-term effects, okay? Um, in, in the very immediate short-term, you've got these effects. In the slightly longer short-term, you've got, um, you know, these all things together called chronic bronchitis. I spell that right. Also, during this stage, in this um, chronic bronchitis um, umbrella, we could also include the fact that these cells are now being um, inflamed. The, that inflammation, inflammation is your body's natural response to damage. Okay, so because you've got increased pathogens in the area, these cells are obviously suffering because of that. Either the pathogens are releasing uh, toxins, or um, they are infecting cells in the case of viruses. So there's going to be damage here. And damage um, s starts this inflammation response, your body's natural response to try and fix things. But um, uh, this is not a good thing. It, it leads to irritated um, lung tissue lining and causing further 
coughing, okay? And the coughing itself is damaging to the lungs as well, okay? So in the short term, chronic bronchitis, and these are the effects that you need to know. So when all these things are happening, what is the actual effect on the gas exchange? Uh, remember, that's the actual function of the lungs. How is it affecting that? Um, well, because of the buildup of tar and mucus, your airways are becoming narrower, okay? So it's narrowing the lumen. So, you know, this the space in the bronchial, the space in the tube, it's called the lumen, and this air lumen is being narrowed um, by the buildup of tar um, and mucus, so obviously it's making the process of gas exchange less efficient, okay? Now this is important because this has consequences for your heart and other organs that are relying on efficient supply of oxygen, okay? Making that process less efficient. Okay, so now we are going to look at the longer term effects of smoking. Um, getting more serious um, as we go along. So someone's been smoking for a long time. Um, now, by now, they are, you know, they, they are much more likely to get infections. Um, they've got chronic bronchitis. Um, but what's the next stage? Okay, so in the next stage, it's really due to a continuation of this process called inflammation. Remember, at the end of the um, at the end of the last section, we looked at um, pathogenic infection increasing because um, the mucus that contained the pathogen was not being removed. So, what happens when you keep getting repeated infections? and um, you're not removing the pathogens that you're breathing in, well, what happens is the pathogens, they are releasing their toxins into the surrounding area. They're not being removed. And what this attracts are phagocytes. Okay, we met them as part of the immune response. They are monitoring the body sensing where there could be um, pathogens and phagocytosing them as part of your non-specific immune system. So the phagocytes arrive and in order to get to an area of damage, they do need to kind of break down certain tissues around them so that they can get to the um, part where they need to get to to repair the damage or clear pathogens. Now, when they do that, they release digestive enzymes. Okay, and one of them is called elastase, as an example. So they're releasing this elastase enzyme outside of the cell, and that elastase digests the tissue that surrounds um, the, the, the bronchial or the al alveolus and allows the phagocyte to get to where the pathogen is. But what this does is it damages the, the, the tissue, the lung tissue, the bronchial, the alveolus, and over time you can get a lot of damage being done to lung tissue because of really high numbers of phagocytes in the area. Why are the phagocytes there? Because there's lots of pathogen there. Why is the pathogen there? Because we're not clearing the mucus away. And why can't we do that? Because of the tar. Remember, it's effects on the goblet cells and on the cilia. Okay, so if this process carries on, you get damage to the lung tissue. So if I just continue my long-term effects here, so long-term effects, we get damaged. Lung tissue. Now, possibly, um, we could get reduced
surface area of the alveoli if we're damaging our lung tissue and we are reducing the surface area that can carry out gas exchange, obviously we are going to make the process of gas exchange much less efficient because we've got less surface area over which that can happen. Okay? The other thing that can also happen is that this alveolus can lose its elasticity. Part of what makes the gas exchange system efficient is that this alveolus is slightly uh, able to recoil when you um, breathe out, helping the ventilation process to occur. But as we get more and more damaged lung tissue, we get a loss of elasticity and um, the process of gas exchange is less efficient. Um, what can also happen is because um, our lumen of the airway is narrower, it can lead to increased um, pressure and actually cause um, alveoli to burst. Okay, because of that loss of elasticity, you can't, can't take that pressure anymore and the alveoli can burst and you, uh, that, that further reduces the surface area that can carry out gas exchange. Okay, so these are the things that can happen in the longer term and in the longer term, um, the condition is called emphysema. Okay. Right, so just to get that on the board this time. Emphysema being the condition where, um, or that kind of covers the symptoms of long term cigarette smoking on the lungs, and chronic bronchitis being, you know, kind of short term, um, shorter term condition. Okay? Um, or, sorry, not a short-term condition, but a condition which kind of occurs sooner. Um, right, so what, you know, the last thing you, you really need to know in, in this kind of, in this topic, is how, how do these things kind of manifest themselves in, in the symptoms? So, just going to quickly look at this. Um, in the short term, right, you're going to have um, coughing because of the buildup of mucus. Um, you will also have increased um, lung infections. Okay? That's in the short term. In the longer term, right? In the longer term, you will have um, difficulty breathing, and you need to be specific here. Um, we are talking about um, shallow breathing. Shallow breaths and um, Difficulty in inhaling. Okay, and obviously, uh, if you take those things together and looking at the effect on the um, the amount of oxygen that's coming into your lungs because of these things, uh, into the blood because of these things, it's obviously going to affect the amount of oxygen in the blood and if you're not providing enough uh, oxygen in the blood you are not providing enough oxygen to your heart in order to be able to pump oxygenated blood around the body there's going to be a lack of oxygen supply to all your tissues as a result so we are also talking about fatigue general kind of symptoms of tiredness or feeling tired because there's a lack of oxygen in your tissues, muscles. One more thing. 
So we looked at the effect of tar on the functioning of the lungs and the gas exchange um, and what can happen in the short and long term. One thing, um, one other effect that's kind of separate, but you know, it ultimately it does affect the lungs, but it's kind of separate to what we discussed, is that tar is a carcinogen. Now what that means is it can um, induce mutations in DNA and if these mutations happen to be in the genes that control cell division and cell growth, then what can happen is you can develop cancer as a result of that. So, um, so tar acting as a carcinogen can cause mutations in the cells that, it, that are exposed to the tar. So of course, again, we are talking about cells of the lungs, the alveoli, the bronchioles, um, anything that comes into contact with that. And obviously the more you have, the more chance you can get a mutation. Um, and it, it does take a very long time for enough mutations to accumulate to develop cancer. So I guess in some ways we are looking at the kind of very long-term effect of smoking. Okay, so um, tar acts as a carcinogen, it causes a mutation, and if the mutations in, in genes that control the cell cycle, cell division, um, you can get the development of cancer. Okay, now this can lead to, um, you know, very serious damage of the um, lungs, you can, if you get a, a growth of a, of a tumour in the lungs, A, you are going to cause an obstruction in the lumen, okay? Um, but also, as, as, you, as you cause more and more damage to the lungs, you've got cells growing where, they shouldn't, where, where they're not supposed to, um, you'll get your body mounting a response to that, i.e. the um, attraction of more phagocytes, phagocytes, releasing elastase, causing damage to the tissue, is going to cause serious damage, okay? So that's why you can get coughing up and coughing up with blood because there's serious lung damage going on. Um, okay, so um, there's not too much detail here, just an appreciation that tar can act as a, as a carcinogen and how it can affect the functioning of the lungs. Okay, good luck guys.